Welcome back to RPG Tea Time. The sweet course is here, and now we're going to roll for initiative. <laughs> All right, Christina, while our tea steeps, go let's uh, go with a question. So, I'm, this is, I'm very fascinated about this, this question is, okay. what was your opinion of role-playing games prior to you playing? Ooh, good question. <laughs> That was a good one. So, um, like I was saying uh, before, is so I grew up in a very conservative family. So it was very um, like we didn't do Harry Potter, we didn't do D anD. d It was oh, they, they worship Satan when they play that game. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which now that I play is the silliest thing. Um, I mean, I suppose your character could worship Satan <laughs> if you wanted it to, um, but I actually. When I would hear bits and pieces of it, it was always intriguing to me because I did grow up in theater and the mm -hmm. idea of playing a character was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't really know enough about it to contradict the things I had heard growing up. So right. it was very easy for me just to be like, oh, I don't know. I hear it's bad. <laughs> it's the thing the bad kids do. Um, it's funny because, you know, as an adult, somebody had gotten me a book of like an RPG, I don't even remember what it was called, but it was like some crime story, Ooh. that like a crime, crime solving thing, mystery thing, uh, it was RPG. And I was like, oh, this looks like fun. Never read the book. <laughs> I just <laughs> didn't, didn't have the time or the energy, I had no idea what it was doing. And I was like, oh wait, there's a whole book of rules? Like, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that seems like a bit much. <laughs> and so I never got it. And, and until I knew people who were doing it and were playing it and I was hearing more about the game and then I was like, Play. And my husband played every other week. Um, well, pre-children, it was every week. Uh, he would go play. <laughs> He'd have his dork night, is what we would call it. And um, <laughs> it's, it's dork night. He's going for dork night. Um, and then once we started having kids, I was like, okay, I love you. I'm sorry. You're going to have to choose a game because he had two games he was a part of. Right. I was like, I, you, every other week is all we can do. Um, and then as a new mom, like, I needed something mm -hmm. that I could do for myself. Um, and I played the one-off all-girls game. It was a ton of fun. I had such a great time. Um, <clears throat> but I still didn't have, like, a group sure. that was getting together. And so when I got to, invited to my brother-in-law's game, and he was like, but listen, this is, like, a time commitment. Like, you are going to be there. You have to, like, you can't just have something crop up and then you're not going. Right. Um, which is why we've been able to finish a campaign. Like, that's, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because he's very strict about it. And so I was like, okay. And so I talked to my husband and I'm like, listen, we have two kids at this point. Time is precious. <laughs> um, and so we we were able to start doing that. And, and I committed the time. And now I look back at what I thought of it before. Mm -hmm. And I... There's nothing, it's not even close to what I thought it was, oh. right? Like the actual experience. Well, what, what about you? So I was also sheltered growing up in, in, in a very religious family. And, and so I didn't really have this to look at. But in talking with my husband and stuff and going through it, I was like, oh, okay, you know, he would tell me a little bit about it when we started dating. And, and I mean, so I would ask him questions. And all of a sudden, he's like, oh, you want to play? And so we did a faux game. We brought over a couple friends, and they're like, sure, we're going to teach you how to do it. And we're going to get this piece of paper, and we're going to write all this stuff down, and we had to do all... I looked over at him, and I said, this is a math game. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, I'm like, you, you're you going to make me do math? And he's like, yes. And I'm like, that's okay. not a game. It's <laughs> not a game. <laughs> and so, but I mean, that's the joke in our... our our home is that it's a math game, but you know, he, he does quite a few games, um, but it's like once a month and they alternate and things like that. And so as he was playing, I got more and more interested. He'd come home and tell me about his games and everything like that. And it, it, that's where the entry came in. And then once we found out there was online version, where I didn't have to sit there and count through <laughs> <laughs> beyond is a, uh, it was is very a nice. Oh well, yeah. So that that's where I started getting a little bit more interested into it. But yeah, I mean, 
I heard the stories of, you know, it was the devil's game mm-hmm. and everything like that. And, oh. and then once, you know, it, it, but then once he came home and gave me stories and stuff, I was like, this is just acting. Mm-hmm. It's being, you know, a character mm-hmm. and a story. And, and it was very interesting. And, and like you said, with like your girls and everything is that you can apply real life situations and problem, problem solving. Mm-hmm. And that's really a lot mm-hmm. of teamwork. You know, and working together as a team, trying to get through a situation, which I, I find absolutely intriguing. Okay, I have to say, these are delicious. <laughs> these these <laughs> tarts are so good. I, have, I, I can't wait to get to the tarts. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so what about you, Sarah? Um, so, mm, no offense to anyone out there or, or to you guys. Um, I don't know. Wait, <laughs> just let it out. Go for it. <laughs> thought it was kind of nerdy geeky game like it is? um so mm-hmm. in high school I, I don't think I mentioned this before but but in high school I had a boyfriend that um played masquerade of the vampire or vampire something like that yeah, vampire of the masquerade yes and like I played once or twice just to appease him but like it was so geeky like I just felt completely out of place and I'm like this is not for me. Mm-hmm. And so when my husband started playing D&D, I thought the same thing. I'm like, no, hard pass. Like, that just sounds <laughs> extremely geeky, and I want nothing to do with it. Like, no, thank you. Like, I'm just, not that I'm a cheerleader or was, anything like that, but I'm more of a, a book nerd. You know, I, I love to read, and, and it was just doing anything nerdy like that, you know, Hero clicks or uh, <laughs> Magic the Gathering, none of that was for me. Like, I'm just not a fan. And so that was kind of, ooh, that was kind of my thought process of it. Um, but, but like I said, um, but you're still married. I, I did. Um, <laughs> listen, he's got other great qualities. <laughs> where we we were board gamers we used to play a lot of board games and um um there's one i'm thinking um betrayal i don't know if you ever played that one yes that one is amazing it's one of our favorites but we would play other board games that we love to play um but here it was a completely different dynamic you know if you're not playing D D, then then you have no social life. Like, that's what everyone here did. And so it's kind of like, I guess I need to join a campaign if I want to hang out with my friends. So um, so that's kind of how I fell into it. So, yeah. Well, for me, I um, when D&D, D&D um, started in, I think it's 73, 74, is when it started. Mm. So... By the time I discovered, because I was born, I'm I'm 48, so I um, <laughs> so I started playing at 18, so I was an adult. I hadn't heard anything about D and D really prior to going to college. My my um, my only ex, um, exposure was uh, a movie starring Tom Hanks called Mazes and Monsters. Oh. And if you watched that movie, you would think that D&D was one of the worst possible games out there for someone who, you know, for, for people. But it, it still didn't deter me because I was in theater. I had, I, I was a, I'm an adult. I'm like, I know who I am. I'm not going to go crazy, right? I, I know my own sanity. Mm-hmm. And it just sounded like acting to me. So I really didn't have that perceived. But let's just face it, I'm, I'm... I am a geek. I'm a nerd. I was a theater geek. I was a book nerd. <laughs> I, I'm the one here wearing a Dungeon Master t-shirt, right? Because I accept it, and that's, and that's good. But I, I really didn't have any really preconceived notions. It is interesting how much the media plays a role in it, right? Oh, like, yes. Because you had that back then where it was very negative connotations. Mm-hmm. 
oh, this is something that you do down in a basement. And right. It's hidden away. Mm-hmm. And you wor- the it's double worship. Smelly boys. It, oh, right. Double worship. There's smelly boys that don't shower and drink Mountain Dew all day. There were, <laughs> there, the, before that, there was pamphlets. There was actual pamphlets about the evils of oh, God. D&D. Oh, D&D. oh yeah. Um, I think my husband yeah. told me about that and that he actually received one from his mom oh, wow. that somebody handed it to her. And he's like, I read the whole thing and just laughed and, you know. <laughs> and continued to play. And continue to play. Well, because he's been playing since a teenager, right? Oh, as a teenager. And his mom was like, you know, as long as he's not doing drugs and he's, you know, <laughs> playing stuff, <laughs> playing with his friends, you know. Right. And, and see, from from my family, you know, like I said, I was very very much into the performing arts. But I also come from a board gaming and card gaming mm-hmm. family. Gaming mm-hmm. is very part of who my family is. Yeah. So as an extension, I mean, at one point, sure, I was an adult at that point. But my mom came to visit me, and we happened to be having a game that weekend. And she she's like, oh, I'll just come, and you know, she she came and. No. I went to tell, oh yeah, and she, someone, one, someone wasn't there, they weren't able to make it, so she sat there, and she rolled their character, no. and, but, but of course, it was, an, it was as an adult, yeah. um, I, I, I come from a southern, you know, Baptist household, <laughs> and, you know, my, my parents and my family were, are not cursors, you know, they, they, they don't, it's, it's not, what I grew up with, right? Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, mom, this is an ad- we're all adults, and there may be some things in the game that are. My mom looked at me and she goes, Elizabeth, I'm an adult. I think I can handle it. I love <laughs> that your mom played D and D. That is so. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna reveal something else about my psyche. So also in my history, I don't know if you are familiar with furry fandom. There's role playing games with furries and everything. I was in furry fandom as well. My mom had a picture of my furry character <laughs> printed out and was on her refrigerator. <laughs> Best I mom ever. Let me just say. Best mom ever. Absolutely. Best mom ever. Oh my gosh. So, so now, well, let's, let's I go like, I want to know is when it's hanging up on the wall and people ask what it is, what is she doing? <laughs> uh, I don't know if anyone actually asked her because, you know, it's... My my first Sona, as they say, was a husky, so it was a dog. My parents had lots of dogs. I don't think anyone thought it was strange that so there was okay. an anthropomorphic husky, you know, wearing jeans and a t-shirt on the <laughs> um, So so now now that you have played RPGs, that you you let's just face it, everyone at this table now is a gamer, right? Yeah. We, we, we can't say we're embracing the nerd. <laughs> How, how has that opinion changed? Like, what, what, you know, I mean, what do you think about it? Oh, I love it. <laughs> I mean, I'm raising my kids that they'll never be able to answer the first question. Like, they're, they're, they're gonna be like, like I don't know, it's definitely my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> my whole life. Exactly. Um, I think it's, I, again, a way to solve real world problems, to practice life skills. Yeah. And a good way to have fun that's interesting, it can grow with them. Mm-hmm. And so for me, it gives me an outlet. Like, it's, I, I have a great time. I have had days where I've had to go to work, um, like, and, you know, because they were super short on the days that we play, and I usually request those days off work. And um, I asked my coworker, I said, hey, is there any way you could come cover, like, the last three hours of my shift? <laughs> I just <laughs> I have to get to my game one time. And she told her husband what I was doing. And he was like, oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, <laughs> it's a very, for the most part, a very supportive community. Like, yeah. There are some not so great aspects of it. And there are some things that definitely being a female that are harder in that community. But there are so many supportive things about it. And I have yet, like, I, I there are some doctors that I work with that are like, Okay, like just play board games. They're like, oh, that's not my thing. But then they go play video games on their phone. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, whereas like, I, but I have no shame in it. I have no, like, I love being a nerd and being into this really, you know, niche kind of thing, which I think is becoming less niche. <laughs> yeah. Actually, thanks to media. Right. Thanks to media. Um, Sarah, what about you? What, what, what's so, really changed? Complete one. Yeah. Because <laughs> yours was a little more extreme. Than yeah. 
So I never heard the devil worshiping thing, but um, I, I did have this very negative opinion about it of like, oh no, that's for nerds, and I'm clearly not a nerd. But I guess I am, because I, I do quite enjoy it. You're a Harry Potter fan. You're a nerd. And now that's Come on. fandom. There's a difference. I'm speaking as being a Harry Potter nerd myself. And I would say once you've collected enough... Fandoms. <laughs> then I'm a nerd. Then you're just a nerd. <laughs> God bless it, I'm a nerd. <laughs> um, you're here. But yeah, so, um, so yeah, complete 180. Um, and it, honestly, it did take me a little while to get there. Um, the first one session I did, I was like, mm, okay, this is fun, but not my cup of tea. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I did a few more where, like, I was playing with experienced players and people who knew what they were doing. And here I'm just like, wait, what dice is which? Like, <laughs> um, what's a D20? All the time. I'm counting the numbers. <laughs> right? Like, I'm like, I don't know. Um, so it wasn't until recently, your game, thank you, um, that, that I really started enjoying it. And, and like you said, I'm now a mother of two as well. And, and it's that... It's that escape, honestly. It's that once a month where you get to just be away from the kids and go on an adventure to someplace completely different and not be yourself for a minute mm -hmm. and just enjoy company with friends. And and it's easy because I feel like you, no offense to my other DMs, because they all have been wonderful um, but I feel like you make it a little bit easier for someone who is not necessarily comfortable in playing, you know, not comfortable with this particular character because it is a new character for me, mm -hmm. a druid. Um, so I feel like you make it easier to be, to, to be a player. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> that, <laughs> means, that means a lot to me. <laughs> I do quite enjoy it. I, I've had a lot of fun at this current campaign, and and um, it's it's very exciting for me, and I look forward to it every month. I wish we could do it more often, honestly, but I don't know if my kids would like that. <laughs> Wait till they get older and they, they, they now don't want to be around their parents, right? And, well, and, and like, Christina, I would be like wanting them to do so. I mean, like, I can't wait till we can have a family campaign. Like, that would be cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so Lish, what what's uh, changed your opinion now that you've played? Honestly, I'm just echoing the two of them because, <laughs> you know, getting away from that day-to-day -day life and being able to, like, step into another skin and step into another world. And, and I love fantasy books. I love fantasy movies. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're stepping into that world and just getting away for a while, you know. And, and, and then this one, you get to do what you want, you know, instead of watching it on the screen or reading it in a book. Right. And, it, and that's what's really intriguing about it. And, and like you said, it was the nerdy side. I never thought of myself as a nerd, you know, as more of a geek, you know. Right. But not really a nerd. And But I'm stepping into that nerdy world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I, I can say that um, I have been very blessed with the campaigns and the groups that I have found. Um, and you... You guys are um, getting to experience all the positive, a lot of the positives, mm -hmm. without a lot of the negatives that female players actually tend to run into. Um, I'm sure that you know. I myself am very confident in who I am. I know who I am. Nobody's going to make me feel like I don't know what I'm doing because they're going to get put in their place really quickly. In a polite way, <laughs> very polite. <laughs> But they're going to understand that I do know what I'm doing, right? Mm -hmm. That's not the case for a lot of new players and especially female players. Right. Is they don't have that support system. They don't get, a, you know, their first experiences can turn negative. The thing that I really want to stress for, you know, anybody is you, it's not necessarily the game that's the problem. It's the group that you have. Sure. You have to find, like in your experience, like, yes, you were with experienced players, but you were not comfortable 
in the same way as you are with a more supportive group. Right. And not that they weren't supportive, but it's... Oh, no, they very much were. It's, it's, but it's difficult for you to know what to ask right. or, or, or to not feel that way. You just have to find the right game, the gaming system. Because it could be the system, right. too. You might not be a D&D player. You may want to play Rifts mm -hmm. and, and roll, you know, Modern 20. Um, but a lot of people don't have that same support, just as long as they know that it's there. <coughs> there is YouTube channels now that are very supportive. Um, you know, there's little, lots of things that I can recommend to make people more comfortable with role playing and with the game systems. Um, but, you know, if it's not for you as well, it's okay. Yeah. I think it's important to, like, I have been playing for years and would still be very intimidated to go to a random group to play with. Oh, like, sure. Because I have always played <coughs> friends. And so finding a random group would be very difficult. But I think it's a little bit like finding a therapist mm -hmm. where the first one may not be a good fit for you. Right. But you got to keep looking. <laughs> like, right. Go and try, get out there. I know there's a group in Orlando that does um, Dungeons and Drafts where they meet up at bars. Mm -hmm. and like, So you can go to a one-off event mm -hmm. and maybe that will lead to a group that can play a more consistent campaign, but mm -hmm. being willing to like right. get out there and try. And, and there's also online campaigns. Mm -hmm. There's a, um, if you are willing to, you know, pay as well, there's like start playing games, which there's people who do this professionally. That you can hop into their games if, if for some reason you don't have that same sort of resource. Yeah. Um, now, kind of piggybacking off of that, you know, what would be your advice to someone who is interested in trying uh, role playing games online or a role playing game tabletop? What about you, Lish? What would you advise? To try it, see if there is something that you enjoy. I know that some not, sometimes we do board games and things like that, mm -hmm. and so, you know, that's always just a platform for the next thing, you know, and see what, what intrigues you. And if it doesn't, like you said, try something new. Reach out there. I don't know. It just, there's always something out there for everyone. Mm -hmm. And there's so many different types that somebody will find something that they like and enjoy it. Right. What about you, sir? I agree. Um, I think just trying different aspects, trying different characters, trying different groups, because the group really does matter. Um, I was telling you before I felt uncomfortable uh, with the bunch of people that um, were more experienced mm -hmm. versus newbies. And it wasn't that they made me, I mean, they were a great group of people. Right. But like, I think it was more thinking back on it, I think it was maybe more the campaign that we were playing, because I think we were playing 5e, ver or no, I'm sorry, Pathfinder, Pathfinder. versus 5e, yeah. and I find 5e being a lot easier, like, it's not as mathematical. <laughs> <laughs> um, I felt um, like I was having to calculate a lot more in Pathfinder, and I'm like, I don't know, this is not for oh, me. Oh, don't, don't, don't give me on Thacko. Don't give me on Thacko. Um, what about you, Christian? What would be your advice? So, I think not letting that intimidation stop you. Like, while it can be intimidating to find a new group, um, or to talk to people and, and see if that's something people would enjoy, not letting that stop you. I know mm -hmm. we've um, introduced some of my kids' friends to Star Court, and oh, they have cool. all loved it. Aww. Even though my daughter was the only one who played when we started. <laughs> um, you know, so I think people will be more open than you think. Um, yeah, also I think not letting, like something that, so I was playing my first, when I first started our first campaign, mm -hmm. I was playing with a group of very experienced players. And I was the newest one at the table. Um, we had somebody join us later who was newer than me, which was nice. Um, but I was the newest one at the table. And I think that one of the pieces of advice I got at the beginning of that game was to take the advice that's given, but I don't have to follow it. Okay. And not doing whatever they tell me to do and just doing what people tell me to do, but being able to like look at my character and what I want to do, and if that's what I decide to do, then moving forward with it, whether they think that's the best way to do it or not. Sure. Yeah. Um, and so I think like seeking out uh, you know thoughts of experienced players, or if you have an experienced player at your table, hearing what they have to say about, oh, well, but with this 
spell, you it would be more beneficial to do it this way because of these stats, you know, and going like, okay, that's great. My character's still going to do this. <laughs> like, that's, because that's what they would do. Sure. Um, right. You know, whether it's what's the most ideal or not. Um, right. I think that that's important. Yeah, and, and you know, to follow up with that, it, it's, this is actually probably my uh, personal um view of me in life, not just at the table, is, you know, if you're comfortable, you, know, well, you have to be your own advocate. And so regardless of you're a new player, you're an old player, you're playing with a new group, you're playing with strangers, you're playing with friends, you still have to know when to be your own advocate. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you know, need to use your resources. Mm -hmm. If it's a problem with personality clash, that, that, that happens. Sometimes you can't get through that. If you're in a group and you have an issue, go to your DM. Because it's possible that the DM may be able to help. Because it's really our job at the table to make sure all of our players are having a good time. And, and that, you know, it's, it's fun. Because let's just face it, it's fun. It's not work. This right. should not be work. Yes, we put work into it. But... We are here to have fun. We're here to have that storytelling. And so I've just heard so many stories. I'm thankful I've never had to go through it. Because let me just, again, nobody's going to tell me um, <laughs> what I need to do. Um, but uh, I have heard that story, especially with a female player and a table of male players who, it's not that they're being, you know, Masochist, you know, I'm sorry, not masochistic, what's the word? Um, machismo. Um, machismo, yeah. yeah. They're, they're not being that. They're, they're, they are generally want to help. Mm -hmm. They just don't necessarily know how to explain it to you. Sure. Or it's going to, it sounds like they're trying to tell you what to do, but they just, yeah. and, and you have to be able to go, hold on, what you're saying, you know, I'll take it into consideration and I'm still going to make my, like you said, you're going to make your own decisions. Okay. So you really, I'm very glad you guys haven't had to deal with that. I'm very glad I haven't had to deal with that. It has yeah. been very nice. And, and the more that this became, becomes more common, right. more inter, integrated, that we'll have less and less of that. I, I will say too, like knowing it, for female players out there, I think knowing that your voice and your character and your input at the table is valuable mm -hmm. and important. Like, yes, we are going to play characters differently from our male counterparts at the table because we have a different lived experience and we bring different backgrounds to that table than they could have, even if they were playing female characters, right? They're not gonna know our lived experience. And so having that female voice at the table is incredibly valuable. Yeah, I, I agree, mm -hmm. having the female voice at the table is incredible. I, of course, have a different view in regards to playing gender because I have played a lot of males. And so I, I, I know that I'm not male, mm -hmm. <laughs> but if I, 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 I do have the you know, life experience to be able to know socially what, what a male would normally be versus a female. And, um, but it's really important. I think we, we all should be represented at the table, whether we're male, female, non-binary, black, white, you know, rainbow colored, green, <laughs> green, <laughs> right. You could be the Hulk, that's fine. Yes, absolutely, we could be the Hulk. Hulk would be great. I would love to have, I would love to play with Bruce Brand. <laughs> that's what I imagine a barbarian, you know, like a traditional, yeah. like a traditional barbarian. Oh, be. do they have a superhero D and D absolutely. Like, that there's play. there's different. Uh, there's I like feel... masters and uh, what was it? Mutants and masterminds, That's and there's there's a superhero palladium. You know. I called dibs on Captain America. If we ever need that. <laughs> oh, no, no. I call dibs on having Captain America. <laughs> if we do that, just just saying. <laughs> uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about, you were talking about. Um, D and D and social media and like um, movies and whatnot. Uh -huh. um, Stranger Things has made mm -hmm. D and D more popular. I feel like like I love seeing them play it, and a lot of people love Stranger Things. Like mm -hmm. I feel like mm -hmm. 
it's made it more popular. The, this is where I realized truly how much it's come into the, the social um, zeitgeist is there's a commercial. It's a, I think it's like a Capital One commercial. Uh -huh. And it's talking about, so it's the, the main person in the commercial is this, you know, black woman and is talking about how she has to do, she's trying to do this, but she really wants to go, you know, do what she wants. And it cuts to her friends playing D&D &D and That's someone's so cool. wearing a home. And I'm like, Okay, now yeah, it's, it's like it's in a it's in a yeah. couple of commercials. There right? are so many shows and so many things that like are bringing it to light in in a much more positive yeah. way, where it's right. not a bunch of people being crazy. It crowd did it. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, um, I remember that. And, episode. and you know what? Hopefully, we will be doing the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Thank you for watching this episode of RPG Tea Time. What's your answers to today's questions? Let us know in the comments. Please like and subscribe to our channel. And remember to hit the bell to be notified of new videos. Happy homebrewing!